good morning everyone on behalf of the department of science technology and environment puducherry and the puducherry climate change cell i extend a warm welcome to all of you for this important training program on building carbon neutral puducherry greenhouse gases assessment uh, we are particularly honored uh, to have with us today our uh, beloved secretary dr a muthamma as who will deliver the keynote address later this morning uh, madam your insights and directions are important in shaping the sustainable future and the climate resilient development of ut of puducherry we welcome you madam we are delighted to have uh, our uh, director dst shri azam lakshmi narayan reddy sir who has guided us and supported us in conducting this program in an effective manner i am also pleased to uh, help uh, welcome thir toyn van megan co-founder of orovil consulting who has played a key role in designing and uh, this training program along with his team of uh, uh, orovil consulting his expertise and leadership Uh, in climate actions and renewable energy and his support to various uh, policy formulations by the ut of puducherry uh, is commendable and uh, he'll be adding more values to the discussions today uh, we are also grateful for the participation of uh, dr madhimaran narajan center head and coordinator at the center for sustainability and climate studies at pondicherry university he will shed light on the complexities of climate change and help us understand the challenges we face during Uh, these days in this presentation we are also fortunate to have thiru raghav nandakumar team lead for sustainability and climate services at auravil consulting and his team members thiru arun venkatraman and uh, thirumadi mahalakshmi prabhakar who will be handling our sessions today it is my pleasure to welcome this team uh, we also have today thiru uh, dibankar kanaka sabhapati senior manager at industrial uh, energy assessment cell of the iit madras uh who sh will share valuable case studies on successful ghg uh, inventory projects uh, it is my pleasure to welcome him we also extend a val uh, warm welcome to all the officials here uh, from various departments of government of puducherry uh, the officials of department of science technology and environment our uh, senior scientific officer uh, senior environmental engineer come member secretary puducherry pollution control committee all the project staffs Uh, and uh, the uh, faculty is from uh, various uh, from pondicherry universities and other uh, research institutions in pondicherry the research students and uh, various stakeholders who are present here uh, your diverse perspectives uh, and experiences will be instrumental in uh, making this workshop a great uh, success welcome everyone thank you a very warm uh, good morning to one and all uh, present here and everyone come in here kale vanakkam it is indeed a pleasure and privilege to be part of this uh, one day workshop on building carbon neutral puducherry along with the green greenhouse gases assessment uh, first of all i am really happy with the turnout that we have today <laughs> i uh, i heartily welcome on behalf of the department of science and technology uh, through toyn van magen the co-founder of orovil consulting orovil it is indeed a pleasure and uh, i heard he has been a pioneer in this field in the region i am very happy that he could join us and i am sure that his input is going to be really uh, helpful i tender a very hearty welcome uh, to our one director engineer thiru kalamegam and his team and uh, all the stakeholding departments i could see many of the officers from the various departments was joined here i am really happy that you could all come and i also uh, I, it is indeed a pleasure that we have uh, dr madhimaran natarajan the center head and coordinator for the center for sustainability and climate studies with us and uh, on behalf of the department i also heartily welcome all of you who have joined here uh, the media members and as well as the the senior uh, faculties uh, from iit madras thru dipankar kanaka sabhapati and as well as uh, mr arun venkatraman from the orovil consulting also who are going to be our experts and who are going to Uh, uh be with us and share their uh, exper expertise and knowledge in this field it is in fact my pleasure to address here the officials from all the government departments of puducherry the research uh, scholars the other stakeholders in this very important workshop on the crucial topic building carbon neutral puducherry greenhouse gas assessment as we move into a development centric world we also compelled to collectively address one of the pressing challenges of our time climate change as we all understand and to work on all possible means of mitigating our emission prone business as usual approach to a more sustainable pathway that would ensure nature as it was 
in the last decade especially post the paris agreement all the national governments including india are working with a lot of conviction to bring down the emission at the national level and the subnational level thereby contributing their fair share to the emission reduction commitments india is committed to become net zero carbon emission nation by the year 2070 at the 26th conference of the parties the cop 26 to the un in line with this the government of puducherry has also committed to minimize the carbon footprint and become carbon neutral by the year 2047 in the conference of the uts held on 26th of october 2023 in this context i would like to bring to all of all of your attention that the government of puducherry has been preparing or has prepared a vision 2047 document with a main focus on becoming carbon neutral and on on climate change and climate resilience uh, 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 technologies to be adopted in the government system with long term promises and targets in one hand and with vision plans and policies on the other hand what we really need is an assessment first of all an evaluation of the visions plans and policies and even implementation to have a track of whether they are really taking us to the intended promises and the targets and the proper mechanism of tracking the real impact of our policies and implementation of this greenhouse gases assessment or ghg inventory as we say which would serve as a foundation for informed decision making enabling us to identify the priority areas for emission reductions set achievable targets and track our progress over time a proper assessment of ghg would empower us to develop evidence based policies strategies and interventions that are tailored to the specific context of puducherry and aligned with a broader sustainable development objectives as we all know what is measured is half way done if we measure how much do we emit it is it is it is part of the mitigation measure as well so in that in that uh, context ghg assessment will pay our way towards mitigation as well also india stands committed to reduce carbon emission intensity of its gdp by 45% by 2030 from 2005 level and achieve about 50% cumulative electric power installed capacity from non fuel fossil fuel based energy sources by 2030 government of puducherry is also working on green energy transition policies and programs in line with the national targets and commitment reaching these ambitious goals requires a clear understanding of our current situation and for this ghg assessment or ghg inventory as it is called it is essential it allows us to track the progress towards emission reduction targets identify areas requiring the most significant emission reductions develop effective policies and strategies for a sustainable puducherry the un's intergovernmental panel on climate change provides a standardized methodology for ghg inventories the government of india has adopted this for indian context and prepared the third biennial update update report to the un framework convention on climate change in 2021 dst has developed the ghg emission inventory as part of his sapcc report in 2013 and 19 these need to be taken up as a regular annual exercise for all the sectoral departments in puducherry as many of you may know the ghg assessment has been done for puducherry for the year to th- for the years between 2013 to 19 and when we looked into the report it it really provided very very important inputs which will channelize us towards taking policy decisions and as well as towards taking implementation measures for example when we look at the ghg inventory of puducherry we see the 60% of the emission comes from the vehicle so that gives a very very important input to the government to the to the citizens to all the stakeholders to focus on how to reducing the vehicular pollution so that is that is the value of doing a, a ghg assessment so on that note i must say that the priority objective of this workshop would be to build our knowledge and capacity on this exercise of ghg inventory and this is uh, that is at the end of this workshop the participants should develop a good knowledge and understanding on how this ghg inventorization or the carbon footprinting is practically carried out so that we may go back and could carry out an actual assessment of greenhouse gas uh, ghg assessment for every department or for every sector that matter the department of science technology and environment has in fact carried out the sectoral ghg inventory as i have told you for the period between 2013 to 19 as part of the state action plan of climate change wherein our emission from the agriculture is estimated to be 1.4 lakh tons of carbon dioxide annually and about 1 lakh ton of ghg emissions comes from the industrial sector and about 1.76 lakh tons come from the waste sector so it is also important although we have a larger share of power demand 
met from the power purchase from the neighboring states we have estimated that 1.1 lakh tons of ghg emissions from the gas based power production plant alone that caters to about 40% of our power demand so we also as we have been discussing about the vision 2047 plan the objective of the government of puducherry is that we would be meeting our total power requirements from the from the renewable energy by 50% by 2030 and and by 75% by 2047 with that goal the department of electricity is also working so all this could emerge from only doing a proper ghg assessment so with a population of roughly 16 lakh in our ut in the present time our per capita emission stands at about 1.4 tons of carbon dioxide with these increasing population and increase in demand of all the resources our emissions are consequentially supposed to rise it is to keep track of this i must say that the puducherry climate change cell in dst <coughs> has already begun the works of ghg emission assessment for the years for the periods between 2020 to 2023 and will continue to have this assessment year on year from now however i urge all the departments must develop a complete understanding of this carbon footprint methodology and will have to incorporate this exercise in all your planning and project implementation like a cost benefit analysis that we do before we take up a project or an activity for which such workshop these workshops will guide us on our capacity building i'm sure the presence of the center head and the coordinator of the center for climate change of pondicherry university and the experts from the oroville consulting will help us in preparing a better ghg uh, inventory for the territory in coordination with all the departments for present here having said that i reiterate that we must always have our ultimate objective of reaching towards the net zero target in the long run as our priority focus and strive towards accomplishing it achieving carbon neutrality requires us to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions to the maximum capacity and offsetting any remaining emissions through sustainable practices such as afforestation renewable energy adopt renewable energy adoption and carbon sequestration well i'm sure it is a long term vision we must all have our collective consensus on emission reduction and transitioning towards a carbon neutral ut so why we are emphasizing more on this is that we being a small ut with around 494 square kilometer with a population of 16 lakh only once if we become a carbon neutral ut we may be the the uh, the first ut in the country to become a carbon neutral one so chandigarh is already progressing towards that direction so we we'll have to take that in positive strides and work towards becoming the first carbon neutral ut in the country and i'm sure this workshop will lay a good foundation for that so i strongly believe that engaging in collaborative discussions and knowledge sharing among government departments experts and stakeholders like this to identify innovative solutions best practices and policy measures would accelerate our progress towards carbon neutrality in puducherry on that note i believe that this workshop would be a productive confluence of all the officials and acts as an initiator for building a carbon neutral puducherry i once again congratulate my team comprising of the director the senior scientific officer the mspcpcc the environmental engineer and all the other my team were present here for a wonderful and a productive workshop today i once again welcome you welcome you all and wish you all the very best thank you aurava consulting had earlier the privilege to be part of drafting the solar energy policy um the policy which is still very much available today and we are very happy that with prime minister's announcement of the 1 crore rooftop solar systems the policy that is there for pondicherry is totally geared to implement such policy such an um, target because the pondicherry policy has got everything it has got net metering group net metering virtual net metering gross metering everything is there in the pondicherry policy so nothing stops pondicherry from implementing a part of that target of 1 crore rooftop solar plus of course we also have very nice roofs in pondicherry we have a lot of flat roofs where solar energy can be installed so that is uh, we were very happy that we could be a part of that journey and we would like to continue to contribute i have prepared a very brief presentation just to set a context for this uh, workshop there used to be an organization which is no longer there called the world watch institute in washington they are no longer there but they used to prepare every year a report called the state of the world 
and in one of those reports they had this graph and in my view this graph says it all namely that today already we are consuming 1.5 times the capacity of the planet if we were all going to live like in the high income countries we would be consuming 3.4 planets worth of natural resources and if we would all copy the USA model we would need five planets and I checked again this morning we only have one we only have one planet so this is not going to work now if you look at the um, CO2 emission this is the graph now can somebody tell me why suddenly it goes up at in 1769 why does that graph suddenly go almost vertical anyone has an answer to this question what happened in 1769 exactly so in 1769 the commercial steam engine which was designed by mr james watt we remember him every day when we say watt kilowatt steam engine came and the industrial revolution came and that's how we have this very steep co2 emission ever since that time if you look at the global energy consumption it is true that renewables is increasing for sure but the overall energy consumption is also increasing so this graph is going up and you see the renewables has a reasonable but still small contribution but the overall energy consumption is also going up what we need to remember is that every economic growth of every type requires energy without energy there is no economic growth everything that we use everything in this room this table which i'm standing behind has been made with energy this microphone all these tables this carpet so whatever we say in terms of gdp growth also automatically means energy growth we have to keep on remembering that uh, we can therefore um, keep track of the fact that global gdp material footprint and CO2 emission go hand in hand they are connected with each other now if you look on the left side you have exporting countries of for example coal I'm just giving one example of coal there are many other examples and of course uh, India is on the right side as a coal importer and therefore countries like India and like many others are even more interested than others to make the transition to a sustainable energy future because we depend on those imports and today with all the geopolitical tension that we have it is becoming increasingly risky to be depending on import of fuels this is a graph which shows you the global surface air temperature and as we can see from this graph it is the surface air temperature is increasing and what we also have seen recently some reports have come which are quite scary which also show that the ocean temperatures are increasing a lot disturbing the whole ocean life these are also facts now a couple of uh, maybe 15 years ago Aruba Consulting contributed to a publication which is written below sustainable urban energy a source book for Asia we contributed to that publication and this graph this pyramid, this reverse pyramid, actually is a very good summary of what is written in that book. If you look at the top, the first question is meat versus greed. Now that is obviously very subjective. Nobody can tell you what your need should be. But for example, I, I want to ask a, a question to the audience. Who in this room, sitting here now, feels that the temperature in this room could definitely be a few, de few degrees higher right so we could ask the hotel right now can you set the thermostat a few degrees lower and we straight away start saving energy that is something to do with need versus not greed but need versus unusual or unnecessary if you enter any five star hotel in a big city I think most of us feel very cold when we enter the lobby right so there is a misconception that air conditioning has to be 18 degrees 19 degrees 20 degrees whereas if you come from outside even 27 28 is more than enough 
So that is the first layer of the pyramid. The second layer of the pyramid is conservation. Now what does conservation mean? Conservation means that, for example, in the daytime, I use daylight. It's as simple as that. That's conservation of energy. The next is efficiency. Efficiency means that in the night, I do need artificial lighting, but I can use an LED lamp instead of an incandescent lamp, as most of us already do. That is energy efficiency. And today we have energy efficient vehicles, washing machines, lights. So energy efficiency is a very important component of this whole story. And then, of course, comes renewable energy, of which the Secretary also has spoken already. And finally, we are, for the time being, still depending on a certain amount of fossil fuel. So the whole idea is, of course, that the bottom of this pyramid becomes narrower and narrower, and that we make a transition to 100% renewable energy. Now, all these things can be taken up together by all the departments sitting here. All of you can do energy conservation all can do energy efficiency all can do renewable energy especially now with the policy that Pondicherry has all departments could have rooftop solar on their roofs and since madam uh, Pondicherry has this group net metering policy which means if one department has a surplus it can be credited to another department you could have for example a building which has a very nice roof shade free but that building does not need so much of solar. doesn't matter. You fill it with solar panels and you create it to surplus in another department because all belong to the government of Pondicherry. That was the whole spirit behind the group net metering system, that you don't waste rooftop uh, space. Now, coming to the energy saving, uh, it's a very long chain. If you look from the left side to the right side, you start with, for example, coal and then you can conversion, heat energy into mechanical, mechanical into electrical, then you get transmission, distribution, and finally on the right of that, a lamp is burning. So a lot of conversion takes place. Now we, sitting in this room, we don't have much control over what happens on the left side of this picture. We are on the right side of this picture. So what can we do? Well, we can change that lamp into a CFL or nowadays into an LED and see what happens. That 100 input has become now 25. So although I'm sitting on the end of the chain, I can control what happens at the beginning of the chain. So all of us can contribute to a reduction in power, energy transmission losses, trans distribution losses by simply consuming less as a demand. Uh, distributed generation, that is uh, already happening in Pondicherry, but there is much more scope for it. The nice thing about the sun is that the sun shines everywhere. You don't have to go anywhere for the sun. For coal, you have to go to a coal mine. For a hydropower, you have to go to the hills. But you stick your hand out of the window and you're catching solar energy. So solar energy is a very interesting source of energy where you can generate at the location where you want to consume. There is no need of putting a very big solar plant somewhere and then again transmission, distribution losses. No, you generate it where you need it, on the roof of your office, on the roof of your house. That is called distributed generation where the consumer becomes also a producer and we call that a prosumer. So all of us can become prosumers. The conventional grid looks like this. This is the conventional electricity grid, which is a one-way traffic from big central power plants to the consumers. But the modern grid will be like this, where the feeders are bi-directional, even multi-directional, because a generator because also becomes, sorry, a consumer becomes also a producer, and therefore the energy flows both ways. This is the grid of the future. Uh, yes, solar energy in our field, we have a lot of it. Uh, this is one plant which is on the roof of the Auroville Foundation office. Um, this is a plant also the same, uh, same roof with a nice view of the Matrimondia. Uh, we have in Pondicherry a policy of net metering, which basically means that the consumer, or the prosumer rather, consumes the energy, but the surplus can be exported and can be adjusted with the import. That's known as net metering. And Pondicherry has that policy. We have recently, uh, Madam, we have implemented a project with Ministry of Power is actually also monitoring. It's called the Smart Mini Grid Project, 
where we want to demonstrate not only distributed generation but also distributed storage. Because I think we all agree that the missing piece in the puzzle is storage. Um, if you look at um, coal, oil and gas, the fossil fuels, can somebody tell me the energy which is in coal, oil and gas came from where originally? From where did it come? It came from the sun, right? The energy which is embedded in coal, oil and gas came from the sun because the photosynthesis process resulted in coal, oil and gas. So basically from today onwards I would request you to look at coal, oil and gas as three batteries. They are not sources of energy. They are nothing but stored solar energy. So as a matter of fact, the whole paradigm shift that is needed in energy is nothing but replacing those three batteries with sustainable batteries. We still depend on the sun as almost the only source of energy, almost. Because we agree that even wind, most of the wind is from temperature difference, that's also the sun. We have the heat of the sun, we have the light of the sun, so the sun remains our true source. What we have to change is the storage of it. So in combination of distributed solar energy, energy generation and distributed storage is the future sustainable energy scenario, which we all can work for. Pondicherry has also quite a lot of rooftop solar. The Chief Secretariat office itself has one of the first solar systems. Um, this is on the ashram, one of the ashram buildings, which one of the Auroville units has installed. And we have very good roofs in Pondicherry for solar energy, mostly shade free. Then coming to transport, Madam already referred to transport. This used to be the Pondicherry of the late 60s. I came to Pondicherry in 1972. There were three cars and two motorcycles. They had a registration number PY01, PY02, and PY3. No, PYS. It was PYS with three digits. But of course, that is not anymore the situation today. It is going in that direction. And it may go into this direction. And that's what we don't want. I suppose nobody in this room wants to be in a traffic jam like this. So we have to have sustainable public transport. We can have e-buses. Pondicherry is very suitable because you can have a, a buses going around the boulevard, hop in, hop off, hop on, hop off, all around the boulevard. Pondicherry has a perfect layout of streets suitable for uh, sustainable small e-buses where you can just hop on and hop off instead of this. We don't want this. Uh, now a small thing about the different types of transport, if you look at the different sources, types of transport, you have car, bus, train, tram, the train is still the lowest in terms of energy per passenger kilometer. And that has got to do mainly with one factor, it has, there are many factors, but the main factor contributing to this is if you look at what, when a vehicle moves on the road, it has to overcome two things, it has to overcome the friction, of the wheel with the road or with the train and it has to overcome the windshield pressure right so the worst is if you sit alone in a car with a big windshield that that car has to overcome that windshield pressure whereas in a, in a train it's like a knife going through butter because you have a very small windshield behind which many people are sitting that is one of the reasons why trains are still one of the most energy efficient modes of transport. In Auroville, we have introduced um, a system called KIM. We have a unit called Kinesi. Kinesi is our e-mobility e unit, and KIM is Kinesi in-kind mobility. So people in Auroville can subscribe to this. All the colleagues sitting here from Auroville Consulting, they're using an e-scooter provided by this scheme to come to work. And while they are working, the e-scooter is being charged with solar energy. So when they go home in the evening, they have a fully charged battery and they go back home. So that's another thing, madam, that the departments could think of, that they make some plug points at the office. And if you come to office in an e-vehicle, either free or at a concessional price, you can charge it. 
that is something all the departments could consider for their uh, transportation. So that is it. That's by the me, me on a normal cycle. I don't even have an e-cycle. So I thank you very much. I think I've given you a little bit of a menu card from where you can choose. I think all of them can be implemented by the various departments and I hope that this workshop will contribute to all of us getting more clarity of how we can go about it. Thank you very much.